first. What a quaint concept. When Boris Johnson succeeded Theresa May, he said he wanted to be known not as Prime Minister, but as Minister of the Union. That was back when he was referring to the UK's constituent nations as the awesome foursome. Since then, the foursome's been looking a little less awesome. One of them got annexed by the European Union. We'll talk about that with Kate Hoey in just a moment. Uh, now another has decided to hold an independence referendum next year. You know, the UK, Britain, whatever you want to call it, has a reputation as a generally stable polity compared to, say, uh, Poland, but it has had significant adjustments of its borders in 1922, in 1801, in 1707, so we're kind of due for one about now. I did a throwaway gag a couple of weeks back that the only country that would vote overwhelmingly to secede from the United Kingdom is England, and we discussed it rather more seriously with Peter Hitchens and Neil Oliver. But are Nicola Sturgeon and John Swinney really going to be the Eamon de Valera and Michael Collins of Scotland? Well, here's Scotland's first minister today giving it the full brave heart. So at this critical juncture, we face a fundamental question. Do we stay tied to a UK economic model that consigns us to relatively poor economic and social outcomes, which are likely to get worse, not better, outside the European Union? Or do we instead lift our eyes with hope and optimism and take inspiration from comparable countries across Europe? comparable neighbouring countries with different characteristics, countries that in many cases lack the abundance of resources that Scotland is blessed with, but all of them independent and, as we show today, wealthier and fairer than the UK. Today's paper and those that will follow in the weeks and months to come is about substance. That is what really matters. The strength of the substantive case will determine the decision people reach when the choice is offered. As Not great, is it? Uh, sorry, you tried that last time. The economic argument for secession. That's not why people vote to set up a separate country. Oh, don't worry, your benefit checks aren't going to be any smaller. That's not a nationalist movement's rallying cry. Scotland is a great historic nation that's made a spectacular contribution all over the world. The things that work were built by Scotsmen. But if Nicola Sturgeon wants to talk numbers, here's the one that matters. 1.29, that's the Scottish fertility rate. It's what demographers call lowest low fertility. Uh, because once you start having that few babies, no society in human history has ever recovered. Uh, 100 Scots have 65 children, have 42 grandchildren, and 27 great-grandchildren. And if you keep that up for a couple more generations, you don't need a country because you'll all be able to fit in a rusting 1973 Ford Cortina up on bricks at the side of the road. The future belongs to those who show up, and the Scots aren't showing up. Let me know what you think about that. GBviews at GBnews.uk. James